Let's solve an interesting problem. Find the image of 3,8 with respect to the line x plus 3y equals to 7, assuming the line to be a plane mirror. So let's visualize this. We have x-axis, y-axis. This is the point 3,8 and this is the image of this point in this mirror. The equation of this mirror, this line is x plus 3y equals to 7. Here's the image. We need to figure out the coordinates of image. How do we figure this out? Pause the video. Think about the scenario. Okay. So if you're standing here and your image is here, this line should be perpendicular to the mirror. Also, this length should be equal to this length. How far you're away from the mirror should be same as how far your image is from the mirror. So this length is equal to this length and this line is perpendicular to this line. Let's use both of these to figure out the image. Before we do that, let's label the points. This is the foot of the perpendicular. This is perpendicular. So let's call this the foot of the perpendicular. P point is 3,8. Image I is what we are trying to figure out. And let's label this point F. F stands for foot of the perpendicular. Okay. So we need to figure out this point. Let's mark its coordinates as H comma K. Now we need two equations because we have two variables. How can we form them? So here's how we can form the first one. PI, this line segment, is perpendicular to x plus 3y equals to 7. So this is perpendicular to the mirror. So we can compare the slopes. The next one is F, which is the midpoint of PI, is lying on this line x plus 3y equals to 7. From this, we can get the second equation. So let's do that. PI is perpendicular to x plus 3y equals to 7. What's the slope of this line? If you move x to this side, the slope of this line is minus 1 by 3. So this means the slope of PI times slope of this line equals to minus 1. Slope of PI is k minus 8 by h minus 3. And slope of this line is minus 1 by 3. So the product of these two equals to minus 1. If we simplify, k minus 8 by h minus 3 is equal to 3. Now we bring h minus 3 to this side. k minus 8 equals to 3 times h minus 3. This is k minus 8 equals to 3h minus 9. Minus 9 plus 8 is 1. So this is k equals to 3h minus 1. So this is the first equation k and h. Let's form the next one. Their midpoint, midpoint of p and i, which is f, this lies on this line. What are the coordinates of f? Well, because this is the midpoint, we can figure out the coordinates by taking the average of these coordinates. So the coordinates of f are 3 plus h by 2 and 8 plus k by 2. So h plus 3 by 2 and k plus 8 by 2. Now this point lies on this line. So the coordinates will satisfy the equation. h plus 3 by 2 plus 3 times k plus 8 by 2 is equal to 7. Now we can simplify this as well. h plus 3 plus 3 times k is 3k plus 3 times 8 is 24 equals to 2 goes to this side. 2 times 7 is 14. This is h plus 3k, 24 minus 14 is 10, plus 3 is 13. So h plus 3k plus 13 equals to 0. That's our second equation. Now two equations, two variables. We can solve for h and k. Let's do that. Let's substitute k equals to 3h minus 1. We have h plus 3 times 3h minus 1 plus 13 equals to 0. So this is h plus 9h minus 3 plus 13 equals to 0. This is 9 plus 1 is 10. So 10, 13 minus 3 is 10. So 10h plus 10 equals to 0 or h equals to minus 1. So we have the x coordinate. If h is minus 1, k is minus 3 minus 1, which is minus 4. So the point is minus 1 comma minus 4. The image is minus 1 comma minus 4. All right, we have the image. We can figure out the foot of the perpendicular as well. That's the midpoint. Let's go ahead and do that as well. So that's the average of minus 1 and 3. That's 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 by 2 is 1, comma, 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 by 2 is 2. So 1, comma, 2. 1, comma, 2 should be the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular. All right. So we have the image and we have the foot of the perpendicular. So if we know the point and the equation of the mirror, this is how we can figure out the image and the foot of the perpendicular. Let's try one more problem. A ray of light passing through I, 1, 2, reflects on the x-axis, which means x-axis is the mirror, 
on point A and the reflected ray passes through the point R, 5,3. Find the coordinates of A. So let's visualize this. We have this ray passing through I, which is 1,2. So the ray is passing from this point. It's moving towards the x-axis. This x-axis acts as the mirror. It's a plane mirror. And then the line reflects and moves in this direction and it passes through 5,3. The point at which it touches the x-axis is A. We need to find the coordinates of A. So this is the mirror. This is the normal. And this is the point A. This is what we have to figure out. Now we'll apply some learnings from the physics world to solve this problem. Pause the video. Figure out what we need to get to this point A. Okay. Let's solve this together. So this is point I, this is point R, this is the incident ray, this is called the reflected ray. And in physics we know that the angle of incidence, the angle made by the incident ray and the normal, this angle is equal to the angle of reflection. If this is a plane mirror, these two angles are equal. Now how can we use this to compare the slopes of these two lines? If this angle is theta, if these two angles are equal and this is 90 degree, the normal is perpendicular. This angle is also theta. The slope of this line AR is tan theta. What's the slope of IA? What's the slope of the incident ray? The angle it makes with the positive x-axis is pi minus theta. So the slope is tan of pi minus theta. And using trigonometry, we can say that tan of pi minus theta is actually minus tan theta. So slope of this line is minus tan theta. Slope of this line is tan theta. We don't care about theta. We need to compare the slopes. If the slope of this line is positive, this line is negative of that. If we add them, we get zero. So that's the relation that we can use. For this context, when the plane mirror is lying along the x-axis, slope of incident ray plus slope of reflected ray equals to zero. Tan theta plus minus tan theta equals to zero. So we can use this relation to compare the slopes. If we assume the point as h comma zero because it's on x-axis, we only have one variable to worry about and we have the equation that can help us solve this. So let's form the equation. What's the slope of incident ray? That's 2 minus 0 by 1 minus h, the difference in y coordinates and difference in x coordinate. What's the slope of reflected ray? That's 3 minus 0 by 5 minus h. So these two slopes add up to 0. Now let's solve this. 2 by 1 minus h plus 3 by 5 minus h, that's equal to 0. We can take the LCM and solve for h. So 1 minus h times 5 minus h in the denominator. The numerator becomes 2 times 5 minus h plus 3 times 1 minus h, that's equal to 0. Now the denominator can't be 0, h can't be 1 or 5. If h is 1, which means we are passing the ray just perpendicular to x-axis, so it bounces back up, which means it will never pass through 5 comma 3. And it also can't be 5 because if it's 5, it will bend in this angle and then move in this direction. It will never pass through 5 comma 3. So h is not 1, h is not 5. We can ignore the denominator. We'll have to focus on the numerator. So if this is 0, this means the numerator is 0. And we can simplify this. 2 times 5 is 10 minus 2h plus 3 minus 3h equals to 0. This is 13, this is 5. So 5h equals to 13 which brings h equal to 13 by 5. So using this, using this relation, we can figure out the x coordinate of this point A, that's 13 by 5. So the point at which it touches the x axis, touches the mirror, that's 13 by 5 comma 0.